In today's globalized world, pharmaceutical products are supplied to many locations around the globe while passing different time and climate zones, as well as different regulatory requirements and standards. More and more high-priced biotech products need accurate temperature control for distribution and storage. The transport by airplane is an excellent way to distribute these high-valued pharmaceuticals globally. We have invited Bart Powells from Amsterdam Airport Schiphol to talk to us about air freight challenges with temperature-sensitive drugs and about the challenges of ensuring product quality and integrity during handling, storage and distribution. Bart is member of the Scientific Planning Committee of the 2015 PDA Europe Conference on Pharmaceutical Cold and Supply Chain Logistics in Amsterdam on October 6th and 7th. Bart is Director of Business Development Cargo at Amsterdam Airport Schiphol. So, how many pharmaceutical products are transported by air freight at Schiphol Airport each year? How many tons? And what is the value? The European pharma trade in 2014 with the rest of the world was 308,000 tons. 109,000 tons is import and 199,000 tons is export. So exports represent two-thirds of the European pharma trade. The Netherlands counts for 29,000 tons with a growth percentage in 2014 of 8%. Import and export in the Netherlands are very much balanced. Import is 15,000 tons and export is 14,000 tons. Where Belgium and Luxembourg is also 29,000 tons in total, with a growth percentage of 4% in 2014, and import is 12,000 tons and export is 17,000 tons in Belgium and Luxembourg together. How much is this of the total air freight in percentage? In Amsterdam, we see 1.6 million tons of cargo. Annually, in 2014, Amsterdam reached a growth percentage of 8%. We were outperforming the rest of the European airports. And roughly from the worldwide air freight trade, we know that 3% accounts for pharmaceutical products. That does include air freight pharma products with and without temperature controlled devices. Um, the distinction between temperature controlled and non-temperature controlled is not able to identify that. What storage facilities does Airport Schiphol offer for the temperature-sensitive pharmaceuticals? Schiphol Airport itself is not involved in the physical processing of any goods. Our cargo handling, that is loading and unloading of planes and storage of cargo awaiting flight or collection, is conducted by eight independent companies. Most of these companies have the necessary multi-zone temperature controlled storage facilities required for different types of pharma, healthcare and life science commodities. In addition, and uniquely so, we have allowed a number of major logistic companies to have what we call frontline facilities with direct access to the airside areas. This is so that the time taken from unloading aircraft to temperature controlled storage is minimized, with unnecessary double handling eradicated. These companies also have temperature controlled storage facilities. How well are airplanes suited for the transport of temperature controlled pharmaceuticals? Are there dedicated spaces in an airplane or only specialized carriers? It varies. Passenger aircraft generally have heated holes for the carriage of animals and this is not what farmer traffic needs. So farmer traffic is usually carried in a separate unheated hold, but temperatures are maintained either by passive storage devices, such as non-conductive packaging and thermal blankets, or active devices, such as motorized refrigerated containers. Both solutions work well, given that most air sectors are less than 12 hours. So maintaining temperatures is not difficult. Modern freighter aircraft, however, often have main deck cargo holds divided into different temperature zones, which is ideal. How often are the airplanes and airport cargo handling areas inspected by regulatory authorities? There are various standards which can be applied for, governing the transportation of farmer traffic. The most widely accepted is GDP, Good Distribution Practice, which is European's standard. 
GDP accreditation requires stringent standards throughout the supply chain, governing such areas as hygiene and temperature maintenance, backed up by proven constant monitoring regimes. To retain GDP accreditation, you have to undergo regular re-auditing. Pharma manufacturers generally insist on GDP as the standard and will not use forwarders, carriers and handling agents unless they comply. Is the staff handling the temperature-sensitive drugs the same that also handles the rest of the cargo, or is this special trained staff? As pharma is a small proportion of all air cargo traffic, the staff are not usually specific to pharma handling. But again, GDP accreditation sets out strict standards for staff training for everyone who touches pharma shipments. And this has to be rigorously enforced and documented to achieve or retain GDP accreditation. What are the biggest challenges for air freight of temperature-sensitive drugs? Infrastructure at airports? Costs? Managing data? It varies from location to location and country to country. The real challenge is always the same. Maintaining the required temperatures from end to end of the supply chain. This can be challenging, considering the several handover points in the air freight process. But the situation is changing and improving daily, with increasing numbers of airlines, handlers and forwarders recognizing the value of this traffic to their businesses, and investing in the necessary infrastructure, training and process to achieve GDP accreditation. At Kippel, we have been aggressively driving this process for some years. Through regular meetings we have arranged between the farmer producers and the logistics community so that everyone can share their challenges, needs and concerns and collaborate to find solutions. Long ago we recognized that speed is essential in helping to maintain temperatures. So we have done a lot of work with our community and government on streamlining processes to reduce time taken throughout the ground elements of the air freight supply chain. This has involved heavy investments, but has paid strong dividends. Security can also be an issue. There have been instances of fake product entering the supply chain in some locations around the world. This is always a risk where such high-value commodities are involved, but GDP provides a strong focus on procedures that help to eliminate such risks. What has been the biggest challenge during your time at Airport Schiphol? Can you think of any extra complicated cases? One of the biggest challenges while I was at Schiphol Airport involved in pharmaceuticals is the focus and the attention that all individual players at the airport have towards handling pharmaceuticals. That means you have to start that there are so many different players involved in this supply chain that each and every one of them needs to be aware of the certain time of handover procedures, handover processes, where you say this is acceptable and this is not acceptable. Pharma is different from general cargo. Pharma needs special care, it needs special attention. And special attention and special care are extremely important when you have several players and different handover procedures. The most critical things are the time pharma spends at the tarmac. Are there any procedures in place in the world when the temperature rises or the temperature drops that you have special alerts and that you can recall shipment? All these things are extremely important and are very, very challenging, even today. Are there any trends you can observe? Is anything changing? Farmer traffic is certainly increasing. India is becoming increasingly important as a producer and China is becoming a more important consumer market for pharma products from trusted external sources. The air freight industry is steadily gearing up to better serve this growing sector. Manufacturers are becoming more sophisticated and learning more about what they need to do to become a safe element in their own supply chain. Thank you very much, Bart, for this very interesting interview. We look forward to seeing you in Amsterdam at the 2015 PDA Europe Conference on Pharmaceutical Cold and Supply Chain Logistics on October 6th and 7th.